أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear viewers, listeners, believers, brothers, sisters, all of you السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And welcome to our fifth session of this series where we're being guided by his eminence Ayatollah Nasser Makarim al-Sharazi uh, through his book 50 Lectures on the Principles of Faith for the Youth a really cool book, a really exciting book, and I hope you are starting to get into it and starting to get your feet under the table and inshallah enjoying it. This will actually be our last session on uh, the section of Tawheed. So roughly speaking, we're doing five sessions per, uh, five lectures per session, if you like, so two per two lectures per session. Um, and this will take us to the 10th lecture from Ayatollah Nasser's book, roughly speaking, so you can go to the book in check it out. So where have we gone and what have we got to so far? So we established initially that it's normal to want to search and understand God and this feeling comes from within and we recognize that it's valuable for us and even humanity at large to pursue this understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or of the creator and therefore we said okay let's go and try and find God to which we said there are two ways to do this the first way which is from within which is a quicker way um, it doesn't take too long you, we had that inner calling of monotheism especially when we're in difficult moments and then we had the second version from external means which is a longer way which needs more thinking more reflection where you look out at the world and you see what's in front of you and you notice that everything is in order everything's obeying some rules be that nature, be that trains, trees, airplanes, Amazon, universe, the gravity, everything. And there's so many more examples in the book as well. And it's incredible that as you look through the literature that we have, both from the Quran and the Hadith, so many different points where this incredible and perfectly timed and meticulously trained creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is spoken about. If you look at Surah Al-Dariyat, Surah 51, verse number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي ardi ayatun lil muqinin," And on the earth are signs for the certain, i.e. those who have faith. It's so clear. And even further in the next verse, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ And even in yourselves, and in yourselves, then will you not see? So not only just around you in the earth, but Allah reaffirms that it's even within yourself, these signs that we see. And if you look towards, for example, in Nahj al Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he talks about the bat and the way that the bat flies through the darkness using this tool that Allah has given it so uniquely through its ears and the way that it understands and interprets sound. Amir al-Mu'mineen is reported to say, it is never prevented from the way because of the darkness of the night. Great and glorious is God, who without a previous model, brought everything into being and i love that little bit there who without a previous model it's not like he was copying anything this is all from the incredible wisdom and infinite wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's loads of different examples as i mentioned you can then look at other parts where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the bee in the quran for example and the way that this bee um eats from the fruits for example and again there's loads and we don't want to go into too much but what we wanted to conclude on in that last session was this, and that is that without any order, there's just chaos. If you just think about it for a moment, if you have atoms, which are made up of electrons and stuff like this, I'm really bad at science, right? So this is where I get a bit awful. But you have these electrons where they kind of live in perfect harmony with attraction and repulsion at the right levels of magnitude and force and when they're deliberately stopped or if they're in a, there was an experiment done to this where they were deliberately stopped it just exploded and bombs were made on this very premise too so can you imagine a world without any order we're not just talking about the sun going out of its timing with the earth we're also talking at the most microscopic level like electrons not behaving as they should and when you take a step back and just appreciate all of these different subtleties, it does just begin to beg the question, just how much is there? Now, I don't know where you're listening to this podcast, right? Maybe you're on the train on the way to work, or maybe you're listening to it in bed after a long day, or maybe you're on a jog. And if you are, good luck for that last half mile. But wherever you are, you can just look around, reflect on the day you're about to have and reflect on the day that you've just had. 
and just think, man, how much have I seen even just today? Science is huge. And that's like just one part of the world. And at some point, you do just end up holding your hands up and recognizing that your creator is beyond a level of intelligence and wisdom that we just simply can't comprehend. And there's a beautiful line in the Quran, Surah Al Luqman, verse 27, 3127. And just listen to this. Min wal bahar. يمده من بعده سبعة أبحر ما نفدت كلمات الله إن الله عزيز حكيم and if whatever trees upon the earth were pens and the sea was the ink just put that in your head for a second whatever trees upon the earth imagine they were pens how many trees? millions? I don't know I don't know if it's billions probably millions right? and if whatever trees upon the earth were pens and the sea was ink how much is there? Loads. Replenished thereafter by seven more seas. The words of Allah would not be exhausted. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. Just think how beautiful that concept is. This infinite and everlasting and huge amount of volume of wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. It's incredible. So... Where does that leave us? We accept, inshallah, that there is a creator, an all-wise and all-powerful and all-merciful creator. We accept, inshallah, that there is no other deity involved in here. It's just Allah alone. But as with any amazing thing that we discover, we're curious. We've got our questions. We want to know more. Remember, we're curious. That's the nature of the human being. We are curious to learn more and uncover more secrets. So to round off our sessions on Tawheed, we're going to look at this final point, which is looking at the beautiful attributes and qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will help us increase our understanding of God. And I'm just going to add a very quick disclaimer here. And this isn't something that Ayatollah Nasr mentions. This is something that I have seen personally. So this could be wrong. But inshallah, you can have a think about this. And that is that I felt that when this concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, and one of the most critical ones is the concept that he is infinite. When that clicked and I truly kind of jumped over that fence, on the one side, you limit God. On the other side, you realize God is infinite. You let your brain go there. You let your brain just accept that this is a concept that we struggle to accept. So much opened up. So, Dear brothers and sisters, if you're able to jump over this fence, inshallah, this will be an amazing revelation for you in understanding and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feeling so secure in any situation that Allah has given you, genuinely. So inshallah, we can go on this next journey together. So it's one thing to recognize Allah through studying the creation. This is the easier side. It's another to recognize the attributes of God himself and this is tougher and it needs so much more thought and caution but why is it so tough to recognize the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the point is this none of Allah's attributes resemble what we see and what we hear I'll repeat that none of God's attributes resemble what we see and what we hear so it's out of our normal dimension. It's out of the normal way that we try and understand things. The first condition for identifying the attributes of God is the negation of any of the characteristics of the created world from that of the sacred essence. Think about it. We start when we talk about the kalima, la ilaha illallah. We deny, we extinguish, we get rid of anything. La ilaha. There is no deity Illa, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It requires us, it necessitates us. The condition is you remove anything from this glass and then you can embrace the characteristics of the created world, of that of the sacred essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's tricky for us and it presents a dilemma because we've lived our entire life in this natural world, measuring absolutely everything in comparison with nature and that, and, and, and that which is tangible. That's just what we've been used to for our entire life. So when we're told to try and compare something to a reference point that doesn't exist, 
We panic. So what does that mean? All of our reference points are all limited, i.e. matter and all its properties. We try and compare stuff to time. We try and compare stuff to distance. We try and compare stuff to what we feel and touch and taste and smell. All the creatures we've ever seen and lived with and amongst or learnt about, they all exist within a time and space within specific dimensions that we're also a part of. Even though, even though the sun is so far away, we accept that it exists physically in this realm that we're in and it is of some size. You know on Facebook they have like those videos where you start with you, then they show you in comparison to a country, then to a continent, then to the earth, then to Mars, then to Venus, then to the sun. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm actually quite small. It's all reference and that helps us appreciate it. But Allah doesn't fit on the scale because Allah is not on this dimension. He's in his own realm. He's, he's, he's out of all of this. So it's so tough for us to visualize a being, a God who, luck, who lacks substance like material substance, who doesn't live in any time or space, yet has absolute control over every aspect of existence and is also completely timeless. And therefore, we need to be cautious in the way that we discuss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to do that, we need to become okay with accepting that in the same way that you cannot pour an ocean into a glass at home, will not be able to realize the true nature of Allah. We just don't have the capacity of doing so. But we need to accept that. And to accept that, it needs us to lower our ego. And that's usually one of the challenges that many of us face in accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One tiny error could take us miles away from the road of identifying God and even leave us towards idolatry or atheism. And that is scary. And hence, we shouldn't try to compare the characteristics of God with creation. We need to accept that Allah is beyond, is infinite, and we are limited. We are that glass and the ocean, if you like, is everlasting. It's never going to fit. But we accept that fact. And that helps us accept the grand nature of the ocean. And in the same way, once we accept that we cannot fully comprehend God, we're able to accept that he is so magnanimous and so great and so infinite and then feel so safe within his beautiful command. And you can summarize God's attributes in the following way. Firstly, God's being is infinite in all aspects and at the same time possesses supreme perfection. Again, we struggle with that. Infinite? No, nothing's infinite. Something that's supremely perfect, everything? No, everything's limited. Aha, uh -huh, this is the difference. This is the fence to jump over, my dear brothers and sisters. God's being is infinite in all aspects and at the same time possesses supreme perfection. That's the first. And the second, God's essence suffers from no defects from whatever perspective. Wow. What a way to think about our creator. What a creator to have. What a blessing to have such a creator. How safe we now feel within the control and safety of this creator that has all this power belonging to him. But is there a way for us to try and verbalize Allah in a correct manner? Can that happen? How do we do it? And in order to do this, I'm going to use the incredible words from the first sermon of Nahj al balagha by Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talim. Ayatollah Nasser doesn't do this, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind us using the guidance of the Amir Ali ibn Abi Talib And I just want you to picture yourselves right now before we go through this first sermon, the first introduction where Amir al-Mu'mineen describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I just want you to imagine in your head once again, there is a fence. On one side of the fence, there are those who are struggling to comprehend that God is unlimited and therefore constantly are saying that he's finite, that he's not able to help them enough, that he's limited, etc. And on the other side, you have these people who just accept the greatness and grandeur of Allah, are completely dissolved in his omnipotence and uh, everlasting nature, and they feel so safe and secure. And that's because they accept the infinite. That's because they accept that he is all perfect. 
that's because their ego is not stopping them from accepting that. And with these words from Amir al-Mu'mineen, inshallah, with and through the intercession of the Amir, we can be taken over this fence from one side to the other. And I promise you, it's a beautiful place to be. Amir al-Mu'mineen in this first sermon of Nahj al comes out with the following. Praise is due to Allah, whose worth cannot be described by speakers. You know how we said, can we describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can we verbalize it? How do we go about doing it? Look at the way the Emir goes about this. Praise is due to Allah, whose worth cannot be described by speakers, whose bounties cannot be counted by calculators, and whose claim to obedience cannot be satisfied by those who attempt, who attempt to do so whom the height of intellectual courage cannot appreciate and the d and the divings of understanding cannot reach he for whose description no limit has been laid down no eulogy exists no time is ordained and no duration is fixed he brought forth creation through his omnipotence dispersed winds through his compassion and made firm the shaking earth with rocks and that's only the beginning <laughs> It's incredible. All this time I've been sat here on one side of the fence trying to describe Allah. But now I've jumped to the other side and I'm like, he's got it. He's got it all. Why am I even trying to do this? He's got it all. Why do I feel so nervous? He's got it all. I'm so safe within his hands, within his metaphorical hands. Amir al Mu'minin continues, the foremost in religion. And look at this in terms of the critical nature of Tawheed, and inshallah, this is a beautiful way for us to finish off this segment of our podcast. The foremost in religion is the acknowledgement of Him. But He continues. The perfection of acknowledging him is to testify him. The perfection of testifying him is to believe in his oneness. And the perfection of believing in his oneness is to regard him pure. And the perfection of his purity is to deny him attributes. Because every attribute is a proof that it is different from that to which it is attributed. And everything to which something is attributed is different from the attribute. Oh my word. We can spend ages on this. So let's just try and break that down again. The foremost in religion is the acknowledgement of him. Fine. So we need to make sure we know Allah. The perfection of that is to testify to him. Okay, how do I testify? The perfection of testifying to him is to believe in his oneness. Okay, how do I believe in his oneness? The perfection of believing in his oneness is to regard him as pure. Okay, how do I understand his purity? That's to deny him attributes. Okay, why do I need to deny him attributes? Because every attribute is a proof that it is different from that to which it is attributed and everything to which something is attributed is different from the attribute he is completely unique and the foremost in religion is the acknowledgement of this this is how we know if we've graduated from tawheed or not. But let's continue. Amir al Mu'minin goes on. Thus, whoever attaches attributes to Allah recognizes his like. And whoever recognizes his like regards him too. And whoever regards him as two recognizes parts for him. And whoever recognizes parts for him mistook him. And whoever mistook him pointed at him and whoever pointed at him admitted limitations for him and whoever admitted limitations for him numbered him whoever said in what is he held that he is contained and whoever said on what is he held he is not on something else don't associate him he is ahad he is unique he is undescribable uncomparable you can't compare him Emir al-Mu'minin continues he is a being but not through phenomenon of coming into being he exists but not from non-existence he is with everything but not in physical nearness he is different from everything but not in physical separation he acts but without connotation of movements and instruments he sees even when there is none to be looked at from among his creation, he is only one, such that there is none with whom he may keep company or whom he may miss 
in his absence. Wow. I think we'll leave it there. I think with these words of the Emir, we will leave it there. And inshallah, with those words, and listen to them over and over and over again, go and read them. The first sermon of Nahj Balagha, just type in Nahj Balagha, Sermon 1. Go and check it out. Because my dear brothers and sisters, if in these five sessions, when we've now been able to jump over the fence from realizing that Allah is not limited, and sorry, from the fence of Allah is limited, billah, to now on the other side where Allah is unlimited, we're in a really good place. And that is where this infinite journey towards our Creator continues and continues and continues. And the more we understand of Him, the more we fall in love. The more we fall in love, the more we want to understand Him. And the more we understand Him, the more we fall in love and it keeps on going. But in that, we continue to recognize His greatness and our inferiority in comparison. And there is no comparison but our inferiority. And the more we recognize his greatness, the more we submit. And the more we submit, the more we accept his greatness and grandeur into our hearts. And once we do that, we obey. Because this is the unique creator. This is why Tawheed is at the foundation and core of our faith. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuan ahad. أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم and inshallah we'll see you on the next session where we begin our journey through Adala this justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah we'll see you then Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah